Morbius, inactive. Real name, Dr. Michael Morbius. Occupation, biochemist last employed in work in experimental neuroradiology at the University of California at Los Angeles. Identity, publicly known. Legal status, citizen of unknown European country with a criminal record in the United States. Other aliases, the living vampire. Place of birth, unknown country in Europe. Place of partial cure, Southampton, Long Island, New York. Known relatives, none. Group affiliation, none. First appearance, Amazing Spider-Man number 101. Final appearance, in full pseudo-vampiric state, Spectacular Spider-Man number 38. History. Dr. Michael Morbius was a Nobel Prize-winning biochemist who discovered that he was rapidly dying from a rare disease that was dissolving his blood cells. He kept his illness a secret, even from his fiancée, Martine. He told his friend, Nikos, and together they worked to find a cure. Morbius attempted, unsuccessfully, to slow the progress of his disease with fluids containing distilled substances from the bodies of vampire bats. Shortly before he would die from the disease, Morbius rented a small yacht so that he and Nikos could conduct their final attempts to discover a cure undisturbed, accompanied by no one but the still unsuspecting Martine. One night, Morbius had Nikos subject him to an electrical shock treatment in an attempt to stimulate the creation of more blood cells in his system. The electrical shock somehow acted as a catalyst for the chemicals from the bats that were in his bloodstream, which then wreaked a radical change in Morbius's body. Within moments, Morbius was transformed into a being resembling, in many respects, a supernatural vampire. He now had superhuman strength, fangs, and an animalistic lust for blood to replace the dissolving blood cells in his own body. Driven by his vampiric needs, without being able to control himself, he attacked Nikos and killed him by strangulation. He was about to drain Nikos's blood, but the shock of seeing his friend dead by his hands caused Morbius to revert to his true personality. Morbius was horrified by what he had done and by what he had become. Then he began to feel himself becoming overwhelmed by a desire to attack Martine and drain her blood. Before this drive could overpower him, Morbius tried to commit suicide by throwing himself into the sea. But Morbius's fear of death then took hold of him and forced him to the surface, and by that time he was wholly in the grip of his vampiric urges. Morbius led a nightmarish existence over the following years. He attacked numerous victims for their blood during that time and killed many of them. When his need for blood was satisfied, his normal personality would fully return and he would be racked by feelings of guilt. Morbius desperately sought a cure for himself, but all of his attempts to discover one failed. Moreover, no matter how firmly he vowed never to attack or kill another victim, his vampiric drives sooner or later inevitably overwhelmed him, submerging his normal, humane personality and turning him into a ruthless, animalistic killer. In the course of his vampiric career, Morbius battled Spider-Man several times. Finally, Morbius encountered and fought Spider-Man at a mansion at Southampton, Long Island, New York. Atop the mansion's tower, Morbius had bitten Spider-Man and was beginning to drain his radioactive blood when he was hit by a bolt of lightning. Either because of the lightning, Spider-Man's unusual radioactive blood, or both, Morbius lost his pseudo-vampiric powers and regained his human form. However, Morbius retained his fangs, and although he no longer required the blood of others to survive and had been cured of his original degenerative blood disease, he still suffered from a compulsion to attack others and drain their blood. This compulsion was not psychological but physical in nature and resembled a drug addiction.
Morbius found work in neuroradiology at the University of California at Los Angeles and there synthesized a serum which he believed would cure him of his compulsion for blood. Unfortunately, Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk, see, She-Hulk, was then suffering from a degenerative disease that not only led to her growing inability to control her transformations into the She-Hulk, but also was causing a cellular breakdown that would eventually kill her. Morbius let Walters take the serum instead, and it not only cured her disease, but gave her complete control of her transformation. In gratitude, Walters acted as Morbius's attorney when he was put on trial for his murders during the time he was a pseudo-vampire. Walters proved to the court that as a pseudo-vampire, Morbius had been unable to control his compulsion to kill for blood. The jury found Morbius guilty only of involuntary manslaughter, but the judge nevertheless sentenced Morbius to serve three to five years in prison. However, the judge suspended the sentence until Morbius could synthesize another serum and completely cure himself. At this time, it is not known whether or not Morbius has succeeded in totally curing himself, or whether he has begun serving his prison term, or possibly even received a full pardon. Height, 5 feet 10 inches. Weight, 170 pounds. Eyes, as human, blue. As pseudo-vampire, black against red. Hair, black. Unusual physical characteristics. As a pseudo-vampire, Morbius had chalk-white skin and possessed fang-like canine teeth with which he could pierce the neck of a victim and draw his or her blood. Power. Morbius was not a true vampire, but was a pseudo-vampire, a humanoid being who had various drives and characteristics in common with true vampires, who are actually corpses reanimated through supernatural means and in possession of supernatural abilities. See Dracula Vampire. Morbius did not die to become a vampire, and since he was never a true vampire, he was unaffected when Doctor Strange used the Montesi formula of the Darkhold to destroy all of Earth's vampires. Like true vampires, Morbius needed to ingest fresh blood in order to survive. In his case, in order to replenish the blood cells that his disease was dissolving, as well as for the standard vampiric reasons. Like a true vampire, Morbius's bite deposited a certain enzyme in the bloodstream of his victims. However, in many, if not all, instances, the enzyme would catalyze a transformation of the victim himself or herself into a pseudo-vampire like Morbius. The victims in such cases did not truly die in the process of becoming transformed as a true vampire's victim would, and could be cured through an antidote Morbius discovered, although it would not work on Morbius himself. As a pseudo-vampire, Morbius possessed enough superhuman strength to hold his own in battle against Spider-Man. In this form, Morbius could lift press, at least 1,500 pounds. In some as-yet-unknown way, Morbius was able to glide on strong air currents, assisted by the wing-like projections on the arms of his costume. As a pseudo-vampire, Morbius had a somewhat tougher body than an ordinary human's due to his superhuman strength, but basically he still had all the vulnerabilities that an ordinary human does, unlike a true vampire. However, he had none of the special vulnerabilities of a true vampire. He was unaffected by garlic or by religious symbols. Silver could not affect him in and of itself, although, of course, a weapon made of silver would affect him just as it would affect an ordinary human. However, as a pseudo-vampire, Morbius possessed the ability to rapidly regenerate any damaged tissue so that he could fully recover from gunshot or knife wounds within a brief time. Pseudo-vampires created by Morbius did not have this ability and disintegrated upon being mortally wounded. 
Morbius slept during the day due to his aversion to sunlight, but direct sunlight would not cause his body to decompose as it would a true vampire's body. Also, Morbius's sleeping state was much like that of an ordinary human's, complete with dreams, whereas true vampires sink into coma-like trances during the daytime. Morbius had no shape-changing abilities and no powers over animals or the weather, unlike true vampires.